Hello and welcome back to Nerd News Today, Toy Fair 2021. Now, as you folks know who are regulars in the channel here, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan. Anything Ghostbusters I have to own. And lo and behold, I happen to come upon Charlie's Custom Toy Shop, who's doing some amazing things. As he puts in the slogan of the online store, it's breathing life into old toys. Uh, so we're joined today by Charlie from Charlie's Custom Toy Shop. How's it going today? Going great, Matthew. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for being part of this. Now, I got to ask you first things first. What was your favorite toy when you were growing up? I feel like I know the answer to this already. <laughs> you know, they all came at me at once. It was the Ghostbusters figures. I got those first. But then, uh, you know, close second, Thundercats, uh, Centurions, and uh, Silverhawks. Those were, those were the big ones when I, was, when I was really literal. I couldn't leave the house without any of them. So, but yeah, Ghostbusters, first and foremost, of course, so. Which does not surprise me at all. I mean, knowing what you've got in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious. And yeah, we'll talk plenty about Ghostbusters. So, you know, for folks who don't know, Charlie's Custom Toy Shop does printing, 3D printing, uh, basically new items for both retro and modern figures. And we're talking about uh, predominantly Ghostbusters toys, but you also do some stuff with G.I. Joe and Star Wars. Um, so can you tell us why you decided to start making these 3D printed items? Creative outlet. Um, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a creative outlet. It was a little bit of, um, finally, after 20 years going into the shed and uh, pulling out all my old toys, you know, because the market was hot, and uh, I, I'm looking at it I'm like, man, a lot of great toys here, but a lot of missing pieces. And you know, I, I put two and two together, and then I just like, you know, let's let's see if we can do this. Um, and it was it was kind of like a natural spinoff. Uh, before I did, before I, I started all this stuff, I actually did, um, you know, I used to play Hero Clicks when the game first came out, and I did a lot of custom Hero Clicks. So. You know, it was just a little hop, skip, and a jump to start, you know, recreating some pieces for some of my missing toys. So, uh, yeah, it just kind of snowballed out of that. Now, can you walk us through a little bit of the product range you do over at Charlie's Custom Toy Shop? I guess we can start with the Ghostbusters because that's like the predominant thing. And the thing I'm most interested in, too, <laughs> is those Proton Packs because I love that you're basically doing like the Proton Packs the way they should have looked, but also updating the ones that Kenner Toys actually came with. Sure, absolutely. So for the last uh, last year, I've been doing the Proton Packs, uh, my, my design. I have one right here. Um, let me see if we can get them up here. And uh, the big difference with mine, uh, the clip is a little different. You, everybody that's got these knows those clips, they broke or the figure would fall off the shelf and everything would break. So kind of went to town on that and redesigned it, made it a little bit more durable. And then the actual pack design was a combination of you know, what I thought they should look like in my head, what I remember they looked like, um, you know, cartoons, uh, the existing toys. And it just kind of kind of came into this one big mashup. So we've been making these now probably for definitely over a year, year and a half now. Um, this one right here is the deluxe version. I just dropped the, the Geiger meter, but uh, it's the deluxe version. So it's got the trap on the side of it. And uh, these are the updated streams that I'm going to be rolling out here. Well, I've actually, I've got them for sale on the store. Uh, but these came out of the design of wanting to make something that kind of imitated the uh, the Ecto Glow figures that nobody can get a hold of, right? Those three. So um, this was the original pack, you know, and I, it's it's pretty cool. I love making it. It was the first real big challenge in CAD for me. I think it was trying to get it right and size it, and then being so meticulous to you know figure out the the, the decode behind it and the settings on the printers, and you know. It's it's a labor of love. I, I can't I can't state it any other way. Um, you know, but yeah, that's the original pack there. And you know, the traps, of course, they come off too, and they slide on and off the pack. And I've actually updated the traps recently. Um, I have the regular traps that I do, and I also have just put Winston down. Um, I've got the corded traps now too, with a little foot pedal, so they slide onto the packs too. And I, I've been making those now for a little bit too. An updated cartoon pack. I had a customer request these. So again, labor of love, sitting there in CAD on a Saturday afternoon, uh, trying to figure this out. And then the subsequent days afterwards of running through print after print after print to try to get it right. So yeah, I noticed also on those Proton packs that the Neutrona wand is a little bit different also. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, again, same sort of idea, what I remember from my childhood, what I remember uh, breaking. And then taking into consideration the limits of the 3D prints and my CAD skills at the time, um, I tried to settle on something that would be a little bit more sturdy, uh, a lot less, uh, a lot less give to it. Um, and the cool thing about it is, and this is the nice thing about PLA plastic on the 3D prints, 
um, you can always get a perfect fit if you just hit it with a hair dryer. You know, so um, it's one of these things where I was doing that at first, and then I decided, well, you know, let's let's just make this a little bit better and a little bit thicker and a little bit more give. But it is a different design, um, and it's got the hole in the side, so you can kind of see the charge of neutrino on. That's that's one of the coolest. That was a happy accident. I'm not going to lie. That was not intentional. It was a happy accident. And I kept it. I was like, I have to keep this going far. And then, of course, the inside, it's just a straight up basic square. Um, the originals, of course, they have two prongs uh, going through the, uh, the forearm goes through and it sets on the wrist and the, the elbow where these uh, actually sit right in the same position, more or less, um, right in between the wrist and the elbow of, of the figure. So and then, of course, you know, you can spin them too. It's just a little give right there but yeah it was like i said labor of love but the happy little accident just to see that little port where the charge comes through that's that's just something that was an accident but it was a cool accident so i can't complain about it and i noticed on the updated pack also you have uh more of a pistol grip on the neutrino wand right yeah yeah so for this one you know to, to imitate the cartoon one um you could put it in the figure's hand like that and i kind of looked at it and i was like um no um, the new figures that came out, um, I forget the product line, but they were the ones that were supposed to correspond with the new movie. Um, I managed to pick up a set of the new ones. And that's how those figures are, where the, where, where the wand sits like this. And I don't know, it just, you know, it, it didn't seem, it, it, it's cool and all, but I would prefer it to look kind of like that. That's kind of like as close as you can get it to get it to look like, you know, somebody's actually holding these things with these with these counter figures and the Hasbro re-releases. Um, but, you know, the nice thing too about the pistol grip is there's, there's a hole right there on the side and it just slides right in and sits flush. So again, you know, it's some of its form, some of its function, some of it's just trying to make it look good. Um, and then you got to find that that happy medium between all those things and, and ensure that it works. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hours in front of the computer just taking that, those ideas and trying to trying to manipulate the computer to get it to do what you want. And then, of course, getting the printer to do what you want. That's always a lot. So. And by the way, I'm not going to let you off the hook right now because you mentioned those Ghostbuster toys you got. And I saw that on your Instagram last year. And I was like, how huh? the heck did he get them? So somehow, <laughs> somehow you managed to get the, the first wave, right, of those unreleased, as of yet, still unreleased I Ghostbuster toys. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. So I was on eBay, oddly enough. And I was looking for another figure. I think it was looking like for a Ray figure. And somebody had listed those, just one of those listings where somebody misspelled one word. And sure enough, it was there. And I said to myself, self, I'm not, I'm not usually like, hey, let's get something before it's released and show it on Instagram or something. But I was like, no, we're going to do it. This is, this is fine. Let's just buy them. So I bought them with the intent of uh, making packs for them. And I did. I made some packs like mine that fit the back of those. And uh, I'll have those up when 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 the rest of the figures are released, hopefully with the movie. So, but yeah, I was so excited to get those. The best is the little terror dog. It's it's so cute. Uh, <laughs> I was that's the, I could I could get rid of the rest of them, whatever with the rest of them. I'll just keep that little terror dog. But yeah, it was really fun finding those on eBay at like eleven at night or something and just getting them. So yeah, it was wild. Do you have those figures handy? Because I'd love to see those up close and personal. You know, I I think they're outside in in in, in the shop. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't pull those out. Uh, let me double check. Let me just make sure. Uh, yeah, they are definitely out outside in the shop. So. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll keep waiting for them from Hasbro eventually. They'll come out eventually, right? They have to. Yeah, I would hope they'd be out probably between March and the summer. I would hope with the new movie. Everything. Sooner than later, that's for sure. Yeah, I've seen the new state. Stay Puff, uh, that's pretty cool. I definitely enjoy the, the many facial features of the Stay Puff. So. Hopefully I get my hands on one of those. <laughs> but back to Charlie's custom toy shop, because that's what we're here to talk about, not yeah. Hasbro stuff. Uh, so yeah, in addition to those proton packs too, you're also doing slime blowers and you have removable proton uh, beams as well, which I think is really cool. I love those different colors. Can you show us any of those? Oh yeah. Uh, I didn't actually bring any of those out. I did bring out the slime blower though. I didn't bring out the streams for the slot for, for the traditional packs though, for the plasma series. Um, so this is the slime blower. This was an idea that was given to me by, by two customers. Um, and they, they really wanted to see a slime blower for the plasma figure. Um, and then the idea originally, you know, just like everything else here, uh, it starts on the 3D printer and it goes through a number of different um, trials and me yelling. And, and, and I think in a video I posted on Instagram uh, a couple of weeks back, I think I showed all the, the leftover packs from the, the trial and error situation. 
Um, this is what I'm probably going to end up rolling with. Uh, this is the slime pack off of the resin printer. Um, it's got just a little quick coat of paint on it just so I can get an idea about what colors I want to do it with. Usually I'll print a couple of these out in one batch and then I'll start figuring out some sort of paint scheme for them. Um, resin, and that's, that's kind of the goal this year is to really switch over to um, more resin items, uh, more casted items, uh, more weird offbeat items, I think. Um, really kind of just take that opportunity and really kind of exhaust my creativity um, a little bit further. Um, but I should have these ready to go, I would say somewhere in February or March. I, I know I joked the last time um, I did an Instagram video that I'm sure uh, Hasbro will have them in their second wave. Um, but till then, you know, but this was fun. This was uh, flexible printing of material. Uh, this one, yeah, it's flexible harness that I designed to fit into the uh, the actual slime blower pack, um, and then of course the cannon, and then the stream. That was that was very interesting. I'm still kind of working the kinks out of that one. Um, I I love the diamond select stream. Uh, it's like the coolest one ever. But kind of want to do something a little bit shorter. You know, nothing nothing too extravagant like that one, so the figure falls over. Um, but yeah, I, I have those, and then uh, of course on the website I have the colored streams, just like the cartoon colors. You know, the real basic streams. They fit right over the tip of the wand. Um, I've done multicolored ones in the past, the blue and orange ones. Um, I've kind of put those on the shelf for now um, because I want to be able to do them a little differently. Um, the printing process, no matter what way I cut it, I was finding that it was just way too much work that was going on behind the scenes. And it's one of those things, there has to be an opportunity for it to be, when it comes off the printer, to be easy to uh, finalize. You know, otherwise, you know, it's, it's one of these things I got to go back to the drawing board. So, um, but plasma series stuff, yeah, I, I would hope, hopefully I can get a hold of uh, one of those Ecto ones here. Um, but then, of course, I've got the Geiger meter too. I've got one of those that I'll have for the plasma series as well. And I have these for the, the Kenner figures too. Um, so, a lot of stuff coming, I'm still working with those. I love that figure line. I think it's a great figure line. I hope they keep doing more with it. Um, and uh, I hope that the pictures I'm seeing of the figures being closed out on shelves. Um, is just because they need to make more room for new figures for, for wave two. So I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> and see, we're not going to go down every single product you have over on Charlie's Custom Toy Shop on the website, but there is a lot of stuff. There's also stuff for the Ecto 1. You've got things for the Ecto 2. You've even got something for the Ghostbusters yeah. Firehouse. So a lot of different options, yeah. different things uh, for pretty much every size, every type of Ghostbuster toy out there, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, the Ghostbusters stuff, I, I'm, I love it. I'm always trying to come up with uh, different things for it. Uh, I've got some new things I've been working on um, that aren't on the website. If, you, if you'd like, I can share some of those. Well, I certainly um, won't say no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple of days ago, I posted a picture of Slimer, of course, a little Slimer guy. Um, originally, a couple months back, I posted a picture of this version of Slimer. That was, uh, he was 3D printed and then uh, sanded, primed, painted, and whatnot. Um, so I took it to the next step with the resin printer, and I ran this guy off and i should have him available the end of february beginning of march i'll probably do them in small batches uh, maybe 30 at a time but it's going to be the figure uh, on a floating stand i have to finish designing the stand a little bit so it'll print out properly on the resin printer and i may even do a rubber mold on the stand just to make it move a little faster um but that's basically what it looks like front to back he'll be a solid figure uh if you'd like him to be this is the paint scheme that we're going with um a wonderful person said that I nailed the colors. I don't know. I'm always one of those picky people uh, where I don't know if I nail the colors right, but we'll see. And then, of course, um, there'll be the regular Slimer figure that'll just float right next to your figures. He's got two holes so he can hold the uh, accessories. And as far as accessories goes, uh, he'll have a set of goggles, his own proton pack, his own wand, and uh, it'll hold the other accessories as well as uh, the PKE meter and uh, the uh, Geiger meter, too. So he'll be able to get in there and mesh well with your other figures so again probably end of february beginning of march i should have those on the web store i'll obviously do a big instagram thing for it too um and that was that he is the end result of me trying to learn blender um and <laughs> yelling at my computer for months and months and months and months i <laughs> can't can't stress that enough the other thing i have been working on um and i'm glad you told me when this is coming out um ghostbusters lore uh john belushi right we we know the story behind that and I always wondered, 
what would Belushi look like as a Ghostbuster? I don't know if anybody else has ever wondered this, but I wondered this. So again, the, the tedium of Blender, we, we're gonna have Belushi uh, Ghostbuster figures. You can kind of see there, he's, he's a little riled up, uh, fresh out of the, the toga party probably, and he's got his goggles on, but we'll have some Belushi uh, Ghostbuster figures to go there. And, uh, you know, we got the standard size head there too without the goggles. I'll probably have both of those. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm recreating uh, the figure, the existing figure heads um, in Blender, um, just so we can do some different designs on the heads. We got a Peter there with uh, goggles, you know, resting on his forehead. And then uh, I think I have another one here too, just a painted prototype of uh, just Peter with his goggles already on. So, and that, of course, that on the back is a resin pack too, of the, the new things. So, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun stuff with Ghostbusters. The challenge, the creativity, just trying to come up with things. And it started this whole idea of, well, who else could have been a Ghostbuster in the 80s? You know, could, could, could Eugene Levy have been a Ghostbuster? John Candy had read the script and gave it to uh, Rick Moranis, you know? So now the wheels are turning. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, they have to have Eddie Murphy because he was originally supposed to be the Winston. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I'm still trying to figure out like with, with Eddie Murphy. I mean, I, I, I it's going to be, I can't wait. I just can't <laughs> wait to do it. I want to have this whole set of like bizarro world or like alternate timeline Ghostbusters. And they just say, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is what could have been. And, you know, hopefully everybody will, will, will appreciate the humor of that. Um, we, we talked about, you mentioned G.I. Joe earlier. Um, I do have a couple G.I. Joe things that I'd love to share that, that will be up soon. It, the new G.I. Joe classified line, cool stuff. Absolutely cool figures. I've uh, been working on a Cobra Commander head for that. I got to readjust the sculpt a little bit too, uh, but we'll be able to get some Cobra Commander heads out there. I know there are a couple other people that have done them, but you know, you got to get into Blender and just, you know, practice any way you can and learn technique. Um, but of course, you know, when you think of Cobra Commander, you obviously think of the throne. And I had a throne for a very long time for the smaller figures. Um, and I'll be recreating this throne uh, for the smaller figures too. But it's going to be just a standard block throne with some Cobra Commander or with some Cobra logos on it. And then to add to the ambiance, uh, we're going to have some Cobra banners to go to the left and right of it as well. Kind of give you that little throne room play set sort of action. That that was just one Saturday, just sitting there like, what else can I do with this logo? What, what can I make? Um, and uh, I think that's where I'm at at the moment, other than drawings, but those are in the, those are in the garage. So. so we've got a lot of really big reveals from Charlie's Custom Toy Shop here. And uh, I gotta also ask you, know, I saw a while back, uh, I know you did a run of some Boogeyman figures. I, I saw some work on uh, a Sam Hain as well. So are there plans to re-release those or maybe do any more larger scale figures beyond this? Just the slimer that you showed so us earlier. Sam, no, that's a great question. I love that because I was actually looking at Sam Hain before I came in here. He's he's going to get done. Uh, slimer is first. Sam Hain is next. And then when I was at my local comic shop uh, the other day, um, I picked up the every every Ghostbuster fan should have their own copy of Tobin's Spirit Guide, right? Um, so <laughs> been thumbing through there as well. Uh, and uh, ideally, I'd, I'd like to create a terror dog um, to mesh well with the Kenner figures. We have one up. We have several uh, now, but I think uh, the Kenner stylized terror dog would be good. Um, there are a couple of other characters I remember from the cartoon growing up um, that I would like to see as figures. And ideally, uh, if time permits, um, I'd like to do maybe uh, I'll do Slimer this year, Sam Hain and maybe two others, uh, the Terror Dog and one other one this year. Because it does take, takes about a month to kind of figure out what I want it to look like, what I want it to do, then the sculpt, um, then the printing, the processing, and then figuring out how I'm going to process a batch. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. I do like Sandman, though. Sandman is, is I, I get asked about Sandman from time to time. Um, I think somebody else did Boogeyman. I've seen Boogeyman. Boogeyman. Okay, sweet. that wasn't yours. I wasn't too sure. Yeah, but there's, there was a really yeah. nice Boogeyman out there. Yeah, well, he looks sweet. I do like it. I do want to do a Boogeyman. But that one's pretty sweet. So if it's pretty sweet, I, I don't know if I can come close to it. But, you know, I may for me, you know, just for my own personal collection. So, but yeah. Well, let me pitch a really ambitious idea to you because this is one of those characters that really no one's done. I think the only version of it that I've seen is in tiny uh, role, tabletop role-playing game version of it. And uh, again, Diamond Slice, they dropped the ball not making these guys either. I would love to see the People Busters. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, um, I, maybe you remember this about three months ago. 
uh, someone shared a, a really, really awesome picture. I've seen and those. Those, yeah. sculpts, those sculpts are phenomenal. And they're people busting. I don't know the correct term for it. I'll call it the people busting wagon. <laughs> it, is, it is awesome. Um, I, I have a rule in my head. When, when people do something that cool, um, I, I'd like to do it to challenge myself. But I know in the end, that's just the one that reigns supreme, you know? Um, but yeah, the people busters would be cool. I love those little game pieces from uh, the board game that was released a couple of years ago on uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, the Cryptozoic. So many cool figures in there. Yeah, so many cool figures in there that, that really should be done. And I'm hoping we get some cool ones, though, with the movie. I'm, I'm really hoping we get some some uh, really good stuff there, like an like an Evo Shandor or something. I, I, I'd really like to see something like I, my, my, my thinking is, I think we're going to get a Ghost of Egon's I'm holding out for that. I want to go, you know, kind of like an Obi Wan Ghost Ghost of Egon <laughs> figure sort of thing. But if we don't get one, I'm making one of those first. I'm calling dibs on Ghost of Egon. So, uh, but yeah. Now, yeah. now but I want to make a bootleg of like the Ghost of Obi Wan Power of the Force figure, but with the Egon Kenner head. <laughs> <laughs> Just Carol Ramis's head glued to it. Exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. So, last thing about what might be coming up in the near future. I know. Quite some time ago I, on your page, you posted a picture of Egon's lab, which was one of the unreleased Ghostbusters playsets. I know someone else actually, I don't know if that was you or someone else as well who had done one um, and it was working on larger um, 3D printed type vehicles and playsets. But uh, any chance you might go in the direction of doing some of the playsets, either unreleased or original concepts? Yes, yes, there, that is a big yes. Um, I have an Egon's lab. When I was working on it, there was a company in one city, BAM, uh, was doing theirs. Theirs is really cool. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what they charge for it. Um, mine is incomplete. Uh, there are still, I think, four things I need to do with it, and I always threaten to finish it. Um, eventually, I will finish it. I will say this though: printed, um, it is. It is a monumental task to print. Uh, it is multiple hours on multiple machines, and um, even though fail safes are in printers, um, I always worry about one shorting out and the worst happening. So. With that being said, I will probably finish it. Um, I will probably, when I do Egon's Lab, I know I mentioned this in a post maybe about four months ago, five months ago, I'll probably just distribute the file for Egon's Lab because it'll be just too big for me to print. Um, and then maybe everybody can print their own and we can all kind of share how cool it is and, and I'll have a, up a laugh. But bigger things, yes. Um, I've, done a, I've done a design for um, the containment unit, uh, the cartoon version and the Kenner one. Um, the fire pole, I am doing a resin uh, reproduction of probably in the next couple of weeks, um, you know, because that's another common big piece. But as far as concept art, play set sort of stuff, I've seen a couple in the past that what Kenner was supposed to do that I'd love to take a crack at. And uh, I do have some other ideas in the back of my head for, for small little play sets, diorama sort of things. So yes, yes, absolutely. That stuff is essential now. We, we need it for our figures on their bookcases. And, uh, you know, it's just something cool. So for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now I'm going to make sure I have lots of other pictures here of all the different things you got on your website. And because there's a lot, I mean, we, we didn't even talk about the stuff you have for the Ecto-1, the Ecto-2, the figure stands, uh, so many other things. Uh, so Charlie, how do folks learn more about what you're doing? How do they follow you? And more importantly, how do they buy some stuff from you? Absolutely. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Charlie's Custom Toy Shop. Uh, you can usually get me at any time. I'm always on Instagram for some reason. Uh, my website, store charliescustomtoyshop.com i put a lot of stuff up there first before i put it up on ebay on ebay you can search for me charlie's custom toy shop i got a lot of the star wars stuff up there some gi joe whale stuff there as well um, usually stuff hits the web store first after it hits instagram and then it makes its way to ebay once i have a sufficient inventory to do so um, but yeah at charlie's custom toy shop at on um, instagram and it's, you know charlie's custom toy shop.com and on ebay so gotta keep the same branding everywhere otherwise we'll get confused <laughs> <laughs> all right well charlie thank you so much today for your time for telling us all about your toys really great stuff i need to go fill up a cart right now on your website and buy some of the things so everybody out there check out charlie's custom toy shop.com follow him on instagram especially if you're a ghostbusters fan and you're not already doing that you're missing out so again charlie thanks so much for your time today and everybody out there who's watching nerd news today toy fair 2021 stick around because we've got a lot more coming right up <laughs>